Creative people and artists usually don't love talking about business stuff, but the reality of making a career out of documentary photography or filmmaking is that it doesn't really matter how good you are at storytelling if no one knows who you are. I mean, it's all well and good to create art for art's sake, but in my opinion, the point of making all this stuff is to show it to the world so they can learn something new. You also need to make money somehow, and if no one knows you, you're not gonna get any jobs. And whether or not you like doing it, the only way you're gonna get your name out there is by networking. Networking isn't as fun to talk about as a new cinema camera or a sweet new lens, but it's probably more important than gear when it comes to actually making a living with a camera. There are a ton of ways to network, and in today's video, I'm gonna get into some of the main ways I've grown my network over the years, and then I'll suggest some overlooked networking events that can be really great for new documentary filmmakers. At the end, I'm also gonna let you know how to access a simple networking planning guide that I made for people just starting out, so you might wanna check that out. You might not wanna do it, but the sooner you get your networking game moving, the faster you'll start getting jobs. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years of working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. Okay, so you've put in the time and you're feeling good about your technical skills and you've got a solid grasp on how to tell a compelling story. You've got a nice two minute reel that shows your best work and maybe you've made a couple short films. But for some reason, you're not getting any traction and those emails aren't coming in. This can be a frustrating position to be in as a new filmmaker. And trust me, I've been there. When I made the jump from photojournalism into documentary video, I was in this position for almost a year and a half. I just bought my first cinema camera and I kind of thought that would be enough for the work to start coming in but it didn't, and after the first year with only a handful of tiny jobs, I started to run out of cash and was honestly freaking out. If you're in the same situation, the answer here isn't to buy a new drone or get better at color grading or something, it's to invest some time, energy, and maybe even some money into networking. One of the least talked about secrets of the filmmaking world is that unless you're at the very top of the food chain, like I'm talking about an Emmy or an Oscar award-winning hotshot filmmaker that everyone is dying to work with, the majority of people just want to work with their friends. And we'll always be friends forever. And by friends, I don't necessarily mean the people they went to high school with or meet for beers every Friday night. I mean people that they know and like who have been personally recommended by other people they know and like. Documentary film crews are like small traveling families. And when you go out on a three week shoot somewhere in the world, you're gonna spend a lot of time packed into vans, planes, and hotel rooms together. Add to that the stress of working really long days mixed with the pressure to be capturing a great story. And you can see why it'd be problematic if the crew wasn't getting along well. All it takes to wreck an entire shoot is one person who doesn't get along with everyone else, and so people try as much as possible to work with their friends, or at least friends of friends. Having a slick website or a super well-curated Instagram grid is nice and all, but in my experience, at the professional level, production managers and executive producers aren't doing social media searches for their directors or cinematographers. And you're probably gonna need more than this if you want them to consider you seriously for a job. Your website and social media profiles are things that they might check after they've already had your name mentioned as a potential candidate for a job, something they'll check more to make sure that you really are up to the professional standard they're looking for before they reach out with an email or a phone call. A website and a social media presence are almost expected these days, but they're probably not gonna get your name in the mix in the first place. The same thing goes for pitching to film festivals or editors or writing grant applications. It's probably a bit more of an even playing field there, but when the editors of the websites you're approaching or the program managers at Hot Docs or whatever have dozens or possibly hundreds of emails coming in every day, Day, they are absolutely going to give the priority to the names they recognize. It's not a coincidence that grant money seems to go to the same people over and over again, and it's because they're known entities, and the people in charge know they can be trusted to deliver. So what are you supposed to do when you're just starting out? The answer is networking, and doing it with intention. The word networking might make you think about a bunch of people in gray suits schmoozing around the water cooler in some office, or... Let's go! All right, fine. <clears throat> maybe a real estate convention in an airport hotel somewhere, but I promise you it is just as important for creative people, whether you like it or not. The good news is that there's no big secret to networking. And once I started taking it seriously, I saw pretty fast progress in terms of work coming in. I'm gonna attach a link to a really basic networking planning guide in the description of this video. So don't worry if this seems like a lot coming at you at once. All right, so where to begin? If you have no contacts at all, the very first step is to identify who you actually wanna work for in the first place. 
This is something that a surprising number of people don't really have an answer to. And without it, it's gonna be pretty tough to know where to direct your marketing efforts. Like what production companies are making your favorite documentaries? Which directors would you love to shoot for? What newspapers or websites publish good quality short films? What local businesses have shown that they value strong creative work? If you don't know who you wanna work with, you need to figure this out right away. If you do know, but haven't reached out to them, why not? The very first step is to make a list of all these people and then actually contact them. I'd personally suggest making a list of as many different people you wanna work with as you can, then digging around the internet to find contact information for someone there. If it's a production company, try and get the email of their production manager. If it's an individual director, maybe a DM on social media will do, though I still think email is better if you can find it and most professionals share their email on their websites. Or if you have a short film you made that would think be perfect for The Guardian or The New York Times films, who's the main contact in that department with the public email address? Make a list, the bigger the better, with names on one side and contact info on the other. I'm gonna include this in the downloadable worksheet uh, if you don't wanna do it yourself, but try and get at least 10 names at a minimum. I have a photojournalist friend who sent out up to a thousand emails a day when he was just starting out. So try to get more than 10, but 10 is the starting point if you're struggling. Use this as your master dream list, which is gonna be where you focus your early networking efforts. At the start, you're gonna to have to cold call people and there's no getting around it, it sucks. But if you go about it in the right way and aren't annoying, it doesn't have to be so painful. I'm also gonna include a sample email in the networking guide uh, if you've never done anything like this before. But basically you just wanna introduce yourself, explain what you do, why you like their company or organization or work, and then suggest a way you might talk a little more. You wanna make it as easy as possible for them to say yes, so make sure you acknowledge their busy schedule and limited time and give them options that don't require much work on their end. That could be like a five minute phone call or Zoom meeting, but in my opinion, there's nothing quite like a face-to-face -face sit down to get people to remember you. Now this can be tough depending on where you live in the world, but I'll get to long distance networking in a second. The main thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of people, even maybe most of the people you reach out to will ignore you or not respond. This is normal and it's okay. That's why I'm suggesting 10 people at a minimum and much, much more if you can. You'll be doing well if even 10 to 20% of people respond. They don't know you yet. And if I'm being honest, if I was an overworked editor or production manager, I might not respond either. You have to cast a pretty wide net and be okay with rejection, especially right at the beginning. For me personally, when I first moved to Mexico, I had a really hard time finding work and jobs only started coming to me once I started sending out a ton of these emails. I started with news outlets because coming from a photojournalism background, that's what I was familiar with. And eventually it started paying off. Like when a massive earthquake hit Mexico City, I was able to grab some jobs with the New York Times and that only happened because I reached out to them. They didn't come to me. When I did well on the first shoot, they came back to me with the following two shoots, but I was the one who made the first contact. Okay, so emails and good timing might help you get your foot in the door, but in my opinion, nothing beats the old school face-to-face -face sit down. Being physically in front of someone is probably the best way to make a real impression on them, and it does give you the best chance of being remembered when they start looking for people for their next project. But how do you do this if the people you wanna work for don't live in your town? Well, this is the same situation I was dealing with when I was living in Mexico City, and most of the people I identified that I wanted to work for were based in New York. The answer was to go to them. I didn't have much money at the time, but I knew that I needed to do something if I wanted real work, and so I saved enough for a flight to New York City in the cheapest room I could find, which turned out to be a weird squat house in Bushwick with a shared bathroom in the hall and a lot of strange noises coming through the walls at night. But before I left, I sent out probably 100 emails to everyone I could think of from production managers at companies to the video editors at news outlets and websites. I tried to make it as easy as possible to say yes for them, saying I'd come to them at any time they wanted and that I'd be in and out quickly. Again, I'll include a sample email you could use in the guide, but the most important point is to make it easy. Most people did ignore me, but maybe 15 in total out of 100 got back to me and told me to come by the offices. And I based my entire week in the city around those 15 meetings. Every day I take the subway and Manhattan with a decent shirt and a blazer in my backpack and run around to all the different buildings meeting with these people. They were usually quick meetings, just a hello and I told them what I'd done in the past, where I was based and what I wanted to do in the future and why I wanted to work for them. I tried to get out of there as soon as I noticed them looking at the clock and then the next day I'd send them a short follow-up thank you email with links to my best project and website. I did that for a week and then I went back to Mexico 
And that was it. Now it did cost me quite a bit. And when I got back, I wasn't sure it was worth the money. And for a couple of months, I didn't hear anything from any of them. Then out of nowhere, right as I was at my most broke, one of the editors I met with reached out with a big assignment following a migrant caravan across all of Mexico for 46 days. It was a dream project for me at that time and it solved all of my short-term financial problems and more than covered the cost of the trip to New York. Over the months after that, a couple more meetings I booked paid off as well, and a few more paid jobs came in as a result. Then, about eight months later, I went back and did it again, meeting with those same people again, and all the new people I'd worked with since then. Then the same thing happened. After a while, some of those contacts got back to me and my network grew. After that, trips to New York became just an expense of doing business, and for about four years, I tried to go at least twice a year. In the start, it was all cold calls, but as time went by and my contacts expanded, it turned into more of a meeting up with people I already knew kind of vibe and got more fun. Now, when I go on a networking trip, it's more like catching up with people than it is awkward meetings with strangers. And the profits I've made as a result are way beyond what the trips cost me. And the reality is if it worked for me, it can work for you too. Figure out where the people that you wanna work for are, save up and then go see them. Get your face in front of them, follow up without being annoying, keep doing good work and showing it to them. And eventually, some of them will take a chance on you. Then when that job is done and you've given it everything you had, go back and see them again. Remember that I said that everybody wants to work with their friends? This is how you become their friend. The same thing goes for directors and producers you meet in the field or sound people or editors or other filmmakers. Literally anyone is doing good work and who you like. Keep in touch, go see them. It's amazing how fast your network will grow. Those people will try and hire you again when they can. And when they can't, they'll give your name to other people. It's how the business works. And once you get started, it stops being so painful and can actually be fun. Other than this direct contact method, you can also get good results by going to events and workshops. Film festivals, photography festivals, masterclasses, screenings, workshops, all these things are great for meeting new people and growing your network. Sitting on your computer and filling up shopping carts with new gear you can't afford is easy. And let's be honest, we all do it. Yes, 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 yes. But if you wanna have a real career with paying jobs, you're gonna need to do more. Spend a few hours finding events that might be worth going to, make a master list and plug them into your calendar. I'll include this in the networking planner as well, uh, which you can download if it helps. But the more of these you go to, the faster things will happen. Networking is one of those weird things in that no one can tell you exactly how it'll work out or when it will pay off, but I promise you it is 100% necessary. And the quicker you make it a priority in your filmmaking career, the faster things will happen for you. You need to see networking trips and attending events like these like a built-in cost of doing business in the same way that insurance, gear, and software is. Because everyone in the world wants to work with people they like and trust, and networking is one of the best ways that I know of to turn strangers into friends and from there into collaborators. Okay, that's it. My take on networking and why you need to do it. Like I said, I'm putting a link in the description that you can follow to have me email you a basic networking guide. Uh, with some checklists and templates that might make this process a little bit easier. I hope that video helped. And if it did, think about giving the video a like or subscribing to the channel. It really does help. And if you did like that one, you might also like this other one I made on how long it takes to succeed as a documentary filmmaker. See ya.